Hello everyone, welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers. Tonight's discussion is going to be about art layers. I sometimes refer to them as sublayers, so if you hear me calling them sublayers during this, I'm referring to art layers. Uh, why don't we jump on into Harmony? Uh, essentially, uh, every to well, again, this was another one of the big things that kind of gave me, uh, well, tripped me up a lot in the beginning when I first switched over from Flash into Harmony. And that being that every layer that we are dealing with uh, is actually made up of four separate layers. Now, I'd like to first start off by saying that uh, Essentials, I believe, Harmony Essentials only has one art layer. Uh, so if, you're, if you have Essentials and you're listening to this, uh, this particular tutorial, it may not be for you. Uh, however, if you have Advanced and Premium, each layer, each singular layer has four separate art layers or sub-layers. Uh, I believe uh, that two are only shown by default since Harmony 12 came around. Um, I think this was in Toon Boom's effort to help kind of streamline the interface a bit. So if you go to Preferences, go to Advanced, uh, Support for Overlay and Underlay Arts, make sure that is clicked off or checked off. Hit OK. And also just make sure that your art layers are being shown. I have mine shown already by simply right clicking uh, either in the camera view on the side or I prefer to keep mine over here. And here's mine right here. Um, by default, the L stands for Line Art. Uh, the next one down will be C for color art. The bottom one will be U for underlayer, and the top one is O for overlayer. Uh, to actually, before we go any deeper, and if your head's kind of spinning a little bit, uh, don't really stress out about this too much. I would say that a vast majority of everything that you do uh, is going to be done on the line art, the standard line art layer. Uh, I mean, like 90% of everything you're doing could be done on the, actually, 100% of what you could do could be done on the line art layer. However, the other layers give you lots of options and different ways of handling uh, some uh, some trouble areas that you eventually find yourself into. The first one I think, and I'd like to point out, is uh, a textured brush. So let's just grab a brush, texture. Let's just find something good that's kind of too small. Let me make it a little bigger so you guys can see. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to pick a, a black color. Looks good. And I'm going to just draw a circle. And again, this is a brush, not a pencil. And I'm going to use red, use my paint bucket, and I'm going to paint bucket it. And as you can see, that is not a very desirable result. Um, th there's kind of like a nasty, you know, the, the color is not going all the way over as far as we may want it to go. And that is because if I was to select the and pull up the strokes, you can kind of see that, you know, th there's a blue envelope, if you will, around the textured brush. And again, this is only about the textured brushes where this is occurring. Um, and that's what's helping to define the feathered edge, the soft edge of the textured brush. And so that's kind of giving us some trouble. The, the fill is not really going all the way to the edges. So let's just select our fill and get rid of it. And this is where our, one of our art layers come into play. We could use our color layer. And right now there is nothing on our color layer. There is nothing defining where that circle could be to properly fill this a little better. So if I go up to back up to my line art layer, I'm just going to select it I'm using my selection tool. Go to my tool properties, and you're going to see a little guy down here. It looks like little three little arrows. Create color art from line art. If I was to shift click this button, some options pop up. Um, I'm just going to hit cancel, and I like to just kind of leave it the way it is. So once I have this selected, if I hit this once, you may not have seen it, but if I go down to my color art layer, there's a little blue line there now. And what Harmony just did was it f found the center line of the brush stroke, copied it, made it into a vector, stuck it down on the color art layer for me. And now I can pick my red and paint bucket. And maybe that's not exactly, the, these color choices are not exactly the best, but I chose them so that you can clearly see them on the video. But the color is, is a little better, where our fill is working a little better. 
Um, we can pick something a little more. Something along the lines of like this. Actually, before I do that, there is actually an option in the brush settings. It's a little brush down there. It says automatically create color art. So in other words, as I draw my circle, there's automatically a vector line is being copied down to the color art layer. So if I go down to my color art layer, there a little blue line should be down there. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't because I forgot to actually click it. Let's try it again. If I zonk that, make sure it's actually clicked for once. As I draw, a vector is being copied down to the color art layer. And if I fill, there it is, it filled in. Nice and neat. So that's one use of the color art layers, or excuse me, the um, art layers. I'd like to just draw your attention. Uh, this is, I did this by accident, but it's, it's a good um, thing to show that I was on the line art layer and I just drug across just to delete this artwork. And if I hit delete, the color is still hanging out there because it is on another layer. It is on another sub layer or another art layer. And this is definitely where it can get a little confusing. It takes a little bit of practice to eventually just kind of remember where you put things. And after a while, it does come to you relatively quickly. I'd like to point out that there is an option if I wanted to delete everything in one fell swoop. Uh, where is it? I believe it is this right here. Apply to line and color art. So if I click that and then selected everything, goodbye, everything's gone. I'm going to uncheck that. Let's find another use for our for our sub layers. Here's this guy again. In our previous tutorial, we had this kind of thing going on here, and I, I drew another hand in there where the hand was dragging. Here's a great use for the sub layers. Uh, I can select this hand, and we are going to hit a new drawing. And like we learned in our previous tutorial, it is good practice to set our pivot point first before we do anything. And sometimes you can see it jotting around. Sometimes the deformer doesn't really, it's not nice to you. <laughs> so most times it works Right, on the, right off the bat, but sometimes a deformer makes the pivot point jump around like that. Just after a few tries, it pops in. Um, so I want to draw a new hand. And if you remember in the last tutorial, that hand I drew was pretty nasty. Uh, so what I'd like to do is actually, I have a rough brush I like to use. I jump down to my under layer, and now I can start sketching. And I can be a little more loose and a little more free. And I want to just kind of rough this in. And again, I'm working on the under layer. And I can define my shape a little better. And again, because it, I'm still working on the layer itself, it's still inheriting all the position and rotation keyframes. I can look at the animation and think, oh, it looks, it's working okay. I can swap back to the, look at that. That's the worst hand in the world. What an improvement. Um, we can go back to the original hand. And again, as I did in the previous tutorial, maybe I'll even make a new hand. I'll make a point. Again, make a new, new drawing. Let's fix our pivot first. And yeah, there's something squirrely about this particular deformer. Fix the pivot first before I go ahead and do anything. Um, and I'm working on my underlayer again. I have my rough brush. Let's get the palm in there. Let's just kind of sketch a hand in there. We'll put a finger pointing. Much better. Much better. Zoom back out and again. And if I don't like the transformation of it, I use my transformation tool, maybe adjust it a little higher, bring it down maybe a little lower here. And if I'm happy with it, because again, I'm working rough, I can change it still. I'm like, oh, you know what, I wanna, I kinda want to just fix that finger a little more. Let's just 
Let's make that finger a little, a little longer for exaggeration purposes. And again, this is the purpose though. I'm working roughly, and I'm going to test it again. Looks, looks fantastic. Looks great. I can go back in. I can. What did I use? I think I used this color. Gonna hop back up to my line art layer. I used the poor choice of the uh, color there on my rough. I don't know what I used. Let's find out. Let me guess. I could do that. It was poor planning on my part. And I usually have a blue. I used a rough. Uh, but anyway, back to what I was doing. Uh, now I can clean this up, take my time and clean it up nicely. Yep. Use my skin tone. And you know, you should have used a different brush. Let's use a different brush. So I'm using my I'm using my rough brush to clean up. I think that'll do. Go a little thinner. There we are. Much better. That matches the style of the guy. Let's just get this hand in there. Here's my stroke. There we go. And where's my other hand at? It's up here someplace. There it is. Pick my brush. And again, I'm working on the line art layer. Oops. Wrong color. Okay, great. And there we go. The, the under using the underlay, I was able to work out my drawings a little better, make them a little stronger. It's very handy for creating uh, replacement parts. So now I'd like to draw your attention to. You can still kind of see, however, the rough animation kind of sitting underneath of there. And so there's a few ways of dealing with that. Um, so one way of doing it is by pulling up the properties. We can use it just. There's a couple different ways we can right click it and go to da, 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 I never use this uh, layer properties or if you're fancy like me you can hit shift E and it does the same exact thing if we go to the drawing tab we'll see all of our art layers and from here we can turn them on and off as we want to and now they're gone and this will also affect the rendering if I turn it off here it will not render in your final render in this particular case maybe I did a whole bunch of hands and I'm like hey these hands are great However, I don't want to see the rough layer anymore. I can just turn the under layer off. Bam, it's gone. I'll never see it again. I can render it out. The artwork's still there if I ever needed to return to it again and re refer to it for whatever reason. Uh, so this is one way of turning it on and off. Uh, another way of doing it is by, and this is going to, I am not sure if this is going to work in advanced or not. So bear with me. But there's another fancier way of dealing with it in the node library under filter, under isolate. And we have a couple of different nodes down here, color art, uh, layer selector, line art, overlay, and underlay. And each of them kind of does what you think it's going to do. Uh, if I was to find the hand, if I was to take, let's say I wanted to get rid, all I wanted to show what was on the, the line art layer, I would just drag out the line art node, insert it in there. and voila, all I would ever see is coming out of that hand layer is what's nested, is what's drawn on the line art art layer. Uh, there is another node in here called layer selector. And if I attach that and I hit the properties of that, this gives me a very similar looking thing to the layer properties where I can kind of hand pick what I want to show. And, you know, maybe I'll Maybe there's art that's like hanging out on the line art and there's something else kind of hanging out on the underlay that I want to keep. Uh, so this particular node will allow me to, to kind of pick which ones I want. 
So that said, why don't we pull in another example of how we can use these nodes down here to create a little bit more of a complex uh, compositing issue. Let's just hide him. Let's go to our library stage. Da, da, da. Let's pull good old texture girl back in here and give her a hot second to show up. Okay, so for texture girl, oops, too far. Let's give her a hat. Let's take her bow and let's just hide the bow for now. It's in the way. Uh, I'm going to, let's just make a layer here. We're going to call it hat. And I'll connect it to her head peg. And for now, I'm going to drag it all the way down, all the way down. Da, 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 da. Here's her main composite for all of her goodies. Everything's. I'm going to just stick it on top of everything. Okay. So there's our hat. We're going to do the exact same thing, the exact same process, except for this time I'm going to be a little smarter and pick a pick a color that's not a. Let's let's use this as our roughs. Rough. Roughs. Let's go with like a blue. I get around there someplace, maybe a little darker. Okay, and we'll go to our underlayer. And let's just draw like a sun hat. Uh, so something like this, where it would curl up behind her head, maybe come down like this. You know, something like this, where there's a big floppy brim. And here's the top of the hat. And I won't get too complicated for this particular demonstration. Now, as you're drawing this, I'm sure you can probably see what the issue is, is that we have this big floppy part right here that needs to go behind her head. So why don't we just clean this up quickly? We can go to our line art layer. Um, um, so her style is... She has no line. How can I deal with that? Uh, for now, I'm just going to make it red so the, for the purposes of this tutorial so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so let's just clean this up. We jumped up to our line art layer. We're going to clean this up. And then what we'll do is we'll just pick some colors uh, for the hat. And I'm going to just make it yellow. And we'll just start paint bucketing. That looks good. Let's give the... Should we make that... How about make that orange? Great. And then for the under the hat, we'll, we'll make that a little darker. Cool, and then we'll t whoops, and then we'll take this and just zonk it. So now we can't see it anymore. So the issue we're having right now is our hat. Let's go to our node view here. So we have a couple things. One, we we want to get rid of that rough hat that we just drew, and that's going to kind of shake itself out eventually. But what we'll do is we'll jump into our drawing view. We're going to cut. We're going to cut our hat up a little bit. We're going to take this piece here that will be tucking behind her head and we're going to cut it out. We'll jump down to our color layer and we'll just paste it. Uh, as you can see as I'm jumping between the layers, we're not seeing the, excuse me, the art layers. We're not seeing the full image. If we click this little eye, you'll see all of them kind of light up and that's going to show us everything at the same time. So that's a good way of being able to kind of uh, just isolate what we're working on. So now we have the hat that's going to go in front of her head on one art layer and then the part that would be behind her head on the color art layer. And now using some, some fancy pants nodes, we'll use the line art node and we'll do something like that. And then we'll grab the color art node Pull a copy of the hat, stick it into the color art, stick this behind everything, 
And there we are. Her hat is now composited on her head. And this makes it easy for us to use one drawing to kind of manipulate the hat a little better. We want to move it down a little closer over her eyes, something along those lines. Or maybe move it a little higher, what have you. Or move it like this. Uh, the downside to this is if we ever wanted to skew these pieces, they, again, you have to remember that this is one drawing that we are using the line art and color art nodes to separate into two drawings, but they are actually still just one drawing, so we can't skew one piece over the other. So this is one, that's one downside of this system. The upside is, is that we're only dealing with one drawing. So if we wanted to say, let's go into the timeline, let's go forward. Let's just say we wanted to You know, change the change the change the drawing a little bit. Like, let's just say um, I don't know the wind kicked up or something like that, or you know maybe the hat is drooping down. That's probably a little bit better. You know, we can just draw our hat drooping down a little more. And maybe I don't know. This is blowing in the wind or something. You know. Okay, and then let's just do some quick color picking. That's not right. There we go. And let's turn this off again. I lost the top of my hat. Turn my line on. Do the exact same thing. Take this yellow here, cut it, stick it down on the color art layer, and we step back out. Voila, there is our updated drawing. We did it once. But the but the compositing is still taking a plate taking effect because of these nodes that are separating the hat out into two layers. So that, while it can be very complex, can also free you up to do very simple things. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up now today, guys. Thank you very much for joining me. If you have any comments or questions, please say so below in the comment section. Please hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Google Plus, Twitter, Tumblr and my good old blogger. I update on a near daily basis with sketches and drawings and whatnot. I do the Wednesday lunch live sketch every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope to see you there. You can click one of the links there and check out what I do there. And I think that's going to be a bit. You guys, that'll be it. You guys have a great week. Take care.